If you've been looking to build a new system or upgrade to the latest Zen 4 or Zen 5 AM5 platform, and you wanna look at what's the best DDR5 memory, then hopefully today's video will help you out. Well, we've got some very fast CL timings here from G-Skill, the latest memory kits, the CL28-6000. We're gonna be testing this out versus some slower CL timings at the same speeds, as well as much faster speeds at 7,800 megahertz with slower CL timings. And we're gonna compare that against 4,800 megahertz too across the 7,800 X3D as well as the Ryzen 9000, the 9600X to see how these memory speeds and CL timings affect gaming performance in your gaming PC. But before we get onto that, there is some important things here with Ryzen. And the first thing being is the U-Clock or the Unified Memory Controller Clock. This unfortunately caps out if your memory speeds go over say 6,400 megahertz, this automatically gets halved. So this is why a lot of the time, a lot of reviewers like myself do prefer to stay at 6400 megahertz or under on the Ryzen Zen 4 and now Zen 5 platforms because you actually do, and you'll see in the benchmarks coming up, that you actually do get a performance hit for you slowing that speed down with the halving of the clock speed in the BIOS and that particular setting. So my sweet spot settings, and also I'm just gonna tell you this guys in today's video, what I like to do with Zen 4 and now Zen 5 CPUs, since the integrated memory controller on these two architectures behaves in pretty much an identical fashion, what I like to do here is actually bump this 6000 CL2800 megahertz up to 6200. We can just do that in one easy setting in the BIOS. And also there's another setting that I change across my AM5 CPUs, and that is the Infinity Fabric. I like to bump this up to 2067. Now I found on a lot of CPUs, you can go up to 2100 or even 2133. However, I have had problems even going up to 2100 megahertz on some AM5 CPUs especially the entry level stuff, like say a Ryzen 5 7500F. So I've found that 2067 has worked actually across the board for all CPUs on the AM5 platform. But basically why I'm telling you guys this is you may be able to extract a little bit more performance if your CPU can handle some higher infinity fabric speeds. But let's get on to the benchmarking test setup right here. And what we've got here is the latest G-Skill Triton Z5 Royal Neo. This stuff is the latest kits from G-Skill. And the good thing is here is it uses the Hynix ADI memory, which if you've already got an ADI kit, what I'll do for you guys is show you the timings on this kit so you can maybe copy the settings if you've already got, say, some slower CL timings or just different speeds in general, and you wanna, say, try this tune from G-Skill, you can test it out for yourselves and see if it works a treat. Also, in today's video, we are using the X670E Pro RS motherboard from ASRock, and there are some other settings in the BIOS that I do disable with my Windows 10 install. This is mainly for me to help out with what I call the snappiness and responsiveness of my desktop experience with a computer. Now, when it comes to Ryzen 9000, I will actually be switching my whole main system over next month to this new architecture and going through all the ins and outs. So do stay tuned for that and I'll also detail all the personal settings I do on the BIOS and Windows to make my system as responsive as possible because I find it really helps out with my workflow in terms of saving time. And that's one thing a lot of you guys appreciate out there. So I will be having that video coming for you. Do not sweat it. With that aside, let's get on to the CPU and more importantly, memory benchmarks across the 7800X3D and the 9600X right after today's video sponsor. If you want to get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And the first game that we're going to look at right now with some crazy numbers is Baldur's Gate 3. This one actually gave out the biggest difference with the 9600X in terms of using the slowest speeds possible, 4800 megahertz, and then using the CL286200. Now, as I said before, I have bumped 200 megahertz on both the CL34 kit and CL28 kit. It's something that I like to do in the BIOS just to get that extra performance, and the CPUs on AM5 are definitely able to handle that 
I've found in practically all the AM5 CPUs I've tested. But what we're looking at here is the Seal 28 from G-Skill. This stuff is coming out with some chart topping performance on the 9600X, especially versus the higher 7800 megahertz clocked kit here with that, of course, unified memory controller clock down clocked and it just has to be that way as we explained before but then also that 4800 megahertz is performing behind the cl34 is doing a pretty good job but there is a substantial gap between the cl34 and the cl28 in this particular benchmark but then we'll look at the 7800 x3d in this exact same example and what we've got here is results that come very close to one another and it's almost like on a 7800 x3d you just don't even have to try in terms of trying to tune this thing. It's actually pretty incredible if you're, especially if you're a beginner and you built your first PC and you don't know anything about tuning, this CPU is definitely going to be the one to get because the other CPU benchmarks we've got here today show an even less of a variance between the best performing scenario and the worst case performing scenario. But let's show you that right now. Where we're going over to Rift Breaker, here's at 1080p, and we've got these settings here on low, as low as possible, really to stress the CPU. But also we are using, as you can see in the benchmarks, the RX 7900 XTX. The main reason I'm actually using this in Japan, I'm gonna be straight up with you guys, is I lost my um, four, 8 pin to a single 12 volt high power connector for my 4090. So I just actually can't even use that if I wanted to <laughs> while I'm in Japan. <laughs> so we're using the RX 7900 XTX and it does make for some interesting results. And what we're seeing here with the 7800 X3D, we'll start off with this first. There really wasn't much of a difference here, actually less of a difference than Baldur's Gate 3 and then we move over to the 9600X, the 9000 variant. We're seeing a bigger gap. And it was actually impressive to see that the 9600X is actually coming very close to the 7800X3D in this title because it does show that the next game is actually a rare win for the 9600X. But I have seen this as well in another title that I tested in my day one review of the 9600X. But we can see here a big difference between the top and bottom, but also quite a substantial difference still between CL34 and CL28. So this stuff does make a big difference for your Zen 5 gaming performance on non-X3D CPUs. I think that's going to be something that we're going to write home about in the recommendation and conclusion here. But let's get on to the last title here. This is Total War, 1080p lowest settings possible. And here is that big victory for the 5600X over the 7800X3D. And it's something that I found interesting in my day one Zen 5 review of the 9600X was that it had the potential sometimes to beat out the 7800X3D. And it's just a really interesting thing to see because once I start testing it more, I'll be able to see what really makes this new architecture tick. And of course, looking forward to that 9800X3D, for example, that's really gonna uh, kick some tail when it comes to gaming benchmarks. But let's get back to the numbers here. 514 average FPS, 194 on the 0.1% lows. That was done on the CL28 timings here. Very fast stuff, but also this time around the 7800 megahertz memory did perform really well here too, coming very close, but the 0.1% lows kind of had like a little bit of a, a spiff, a little bit of a spit the dummy moment there, as opposed to all the other results here. But it was good to see that that was scoring a victory over the 7800X3D, which lo and behold, did not make a difference really between the 4800 megahertz and also the CL34 and the 7800 megahertz. And with all that aside, it's time for a conclusion and a recommendation with memory speeds and Zen 5, and also this Trident Z5 Royal Neo stuff that G-Skill did send over for today's video. So big thanks to G-Skill for sending this over. This is a fresh kit off the press, and I'm very grateful that I got to spend some time with it, especially when it comes to building a rig with a non-X3D part on AM5. I think that's where this memory is going to make the biggest difference. Though I will say one negative about this stuff in particular is it fingerprints extremely easy. So if you're like me and you just put your fingers over stuff, especially if you've got test rigs and you're testing out things all the time, this thing is just going to have fingerprints galore over it. So you'll probably have to clean the final thing with a cloth once it's inserted into the motherboard. But besides that, the stuff is a little bit costly as well. Stuff 
stuff like this is going to cost more money, especially versus say some regular 5,600 megahertz memory. But of course, with anything in life, you get what you pay for. And what you're getting with this stuff here is some of the best timings, especially out of the box with those Expo profiles designed for AM5 that just works absolutely fine i had no hiccups and as we said in these benchmarks here today this stuff is 6000 but i was able just to quickly dial it in to 6200 megahertz and it worked flawlessly and so that's a really good thing for people who want to get that extra performance out of their am5 processors especially those non x 3d parts and also the final thing is it's using the hynix a die now i do believe there is m die which is even a step above that but for what it's worth here i was extremely impressed with this performance and the there's also another benefit there and that is you can also copy the timings which I'll show you guys right here again as I did in the intro. So overall really impressed with G-Skill memory. It's generally what I use for all my benchmarks and personal rigs when it comes to uh, using DDR5 memory. Really good stuff. I'm looking forward to putting this into my new rig although I will be trying to look for a 64 gigabyte kit because mainly I need 64 gigabytes for my workload. And that's about it with today's benchmarks. Hope you guys enjoyed looking deeper into what's going on with the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D as well as the Ryzen 5 9600X and in relation to the memory speeds, the CL timings and all that jazz. But basically my conclusion here today is the non-X 3D parts, it makes a bigger difference. Of course, having the less amount of cash available on the cpu and the 7800x 3d having a monster amount of that stuff i guess that would just be naturally expected to see this in the gaming benchmarks which we saw here today anyway hope this information has helped you out and if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content be sure to hit that sub button ring that bell and i'll catch you in another tech video very soon peace out for now bye